I'm at California's largest lake. No, I'm not talking about Lake Tahoe. Today I'm not doing a video about radio communications or off-roading. Well, sort of about off-roading. Because a couple of the places I'm going to go, you need to go off-road to get to. But this isn't an off-roading video. Today I'm at Salton Sea and I'm going to go... I'm going to drive around the entire lake and I'm going to show you, I'm going to stop at several of the most popular stops. If you've ever been to Salton Sea, if you ever went camping or visited, chances are where I'm going to stop today you've been to. And I'm going to show where the water levels are. This is uh, the end of March uh, 2021. And as you probably know, the state of California stopped diverting the last drops of water into the Salton Sea in 2017. They did that because San Diego needs to keep their golf courses green priorities. So when they did that in 2017, the water level of Salton Sea began to drop. Even though the level has been dropping steadily over the last several years, it's really started dropping as of 2017. It does not stink. You know, there's a lot of ignorance and stupidity out there about salt and sea. I think, yeah, we'll do some myth busting today as well. So at each stop that I make, in addition to showing you the water level, I'll try to bust at least one myth. The first myth, we're at our first stop here, is that salt and sea does not stink all the time. It does, you will get an aroma in summertime. You may see a dead fish on the shoreline and that will give an aroma. And also as the water heats up, uh, the, uh, there's so much life and algae and stuff bubbling up in the water that it makes gas rise and that's really what you smell. But right now, it smells better than Long Beach. Now you may have noticed, if you watch this channel, I've done several videos about salt and sea. Just posted a few recently. If you're familiar with me, or if you follow my other channel, you may know that I have a special connection with salt and sea. Not only did I used to camp here for a almost every weekend for about 10 years as a kid back in the 1970s. But in 2014, after not being here for 30 years, I came back and I did a little project down here, which made me uh, very familiar with the shoreline. So I'm gonna show you the levels of water where they are today in 2021. I'll mention where they were, if it was a place I was at as a kid. Then I'll mention what the water level was like in 2014 and 15, and I'll show what it looks like today. Now, this is the point where a lot of YouTube channels would uh, roll some stupid flashy intro with graphics and music and they'd beg for you to subscribe. I'm not going to do any of that, so we're just going to get started. Okay, the first stop, North Shore Beach Yacht Club, right off of Highway 111. Let's sit there behind me. In 2014-2015, this entire bay behind me was full. I'd be underwater where I'm standing right now. This is what it looks like today. Stop number two of Salt and Sea Water Level Tour 2021. I'm at Corvina Beach, just a few miles south of the Yacht Club where I just was. This place is the place I'm most familiar with because between 1976 and 1980, I camped here with my family hundreds of times every weekend. And back then, and back then, the water level can you see the uh, cliffs there? That's where the water level was. You'd walk a few feet from the little cliff there and you'd be in the water, you'd be fishing. So that's where the water was back in the 70s and 80s. Where I'm standing now is roughly where the water was in 2014, 2015, give or take a few yards. Where the water level is now, two or 300 yards further that way. So between 2014 and 15, and today, 2021, the water has gone down several hundred more yards. When I was a kid in 1977, I wasn't even allowed to come out this far into the water. It's too far from shore. It's dangerous. Shark might have gotten me. Now, a moment ago, if you recall, I mentioned swimming here as a kid swam here all the time. Everybody did when we're 
fishing and catching corvinas by the boatload, literally. So myth number two, if we're on number two, is that you can't swim in Salton Sea. You may not want to swim in Salton Sea. That's perfectly valid. That's on up to you. Yes, you can swim in Salton Sea. It is not full of poison. The fish have not all died because of the poison. The fish have died because it's getting too salty. The fish die off every season in the summer because it gets hot. The uh, algae grows, sucks all the oxygen out of the water. The fish die, they wash up. Oh, the sewage that flows in from Mexico. Yeah, they fixed that decades ago. I'm not saying the new river, which is where that would come from, is clean, I wouldn't drink it, but it's not flowing sewage like it did 40 years ago. And according to state and private testing, the water is perfectly fine rec for recreational use and swimming. If you disagree, leave a link to a source that says it's not safe to swim. Because if you say it's not safe to swim and leave a comment saying that, I will call you out and I'll pin it to the top for everybody to see and make fun of you. Unless you have the link to a valid source for your claim. Made it to Bombay Beach, stop number three. Right behind me here is one of the uh, big marinas that used to be full of water. And as you can see now behind me, the water level 100, 150 yards out. When I came through here in 2015, the water level, it was about 50 yards closer. So it's dropped quite a bit. I'm down kind of inside one of the marinas now. Now the last time I was here, there was still water in here. You can see, B, get away. So since I am at the bottom of one of the marinas, what better time to talk about myth number three, whatever salt and sea myth we're on. That myth is salt and sea is man-made. Sorta, kinda. This incantation of salt and sea started back in 1903, 1905. I, don't quote me because I'm an old man, I don't remember, by some person trying to divert some water from the Colorado River and, oops, accidentally busted open a levee. The Colorado River flowed unimpeded into Salton Sea for a couple of years. That's what created the current Salton Sea as we know it. It's not like a man-made lake where they go and they build a dam and they make a lake. But is Salton Sea man-made? No, not really. Technically, no, sort of, yes, I'll give you that one. I'm at Nyland Marina now, and I'm right inside the boat launch. You can see that the boat launch is about 100 yards long from where I am. In the 1970s, I'd be under six feet of water. When I was here in 2014 and 15, actually the water was quite a ways up there, 10 or 20 yards. But today, the water is right here. So just in the last, since 2015 till 2021, it, it's come down dozens of yards. And from the 70s, 100 yards or more. Now another myth, it's not really a myth, but I wanted to mention it. One of the things that people complain about when they come to Salton Sea is about all the fish, dead fish on the shore. And in 2015, going all the way back into the 70s, that was true. In the summertime especially, the algae would grow and the algae would grow too much and that's because of the fertilizers that would come in from the farms. And as the algae grows, it sucks the oxygen out of the water and that causes the fish to die, wash up on the shore. The birds love it. People hate it because it makes it stink. Today, I have not seen one dead fish. Not one. And if you've been here before, you know that normally along the shore, you'd be walking in a carpet of fish and fish bones. It's not like that today. And while some people may be happy, great, no fish, it won't stink. It's actually not great news because that means there ain't no more fish out there. The scientists have been predicting for years that as the salinity rises, the fish would die off. It doesn't actually kill the fish, it prevents them from reproducing. And they've just reproduced out. And also hardly any birds. This place used to be covered in birds eating the fish. Not seeing them. It's the boat launch. Red Hill Marina. In the 1970s, 
In the 80s, I'd be underwater right now. It's where you would launch your boat, right here. So I'm gonna show you where the water is now. But before I do that, let's talk about another myth. That myth is that Salton Sea is a volcano. That's actually true. The entire southern area of Salton Sea is a extinct, eh, not fully extinct, it, there's still a little activity. As you may know, there's a lot of geothermal plants all around the south end of Salton Sea. It's because it's still active. There's mud volcanoes, bubbling mud pots. Most people don't know about them. It's a whole mud pot field. You're not allowed to go down there now. Don't go down there. I've been down there. I had permission. The San Andreas Fault starts right here, right under my feet. Or it ends here, it depends on which way you're facing. Every once in a while there'll be a earthquake swarm down in this area. People get very nervous. They say the Salton Sea super volcano could erupt. Not likely, but possible. So yes, myth number, whatever number I'm on now, Salton Sea is a volcano. That's true, southern half is, or at least was. Sort of, kind of is, still, a little, yeah. So I'm still walking. I've still got about 150 yards to go to get to where the water was when I came through here in 2015. This is gonna be a bit of a walk. He's gonna learn the hard way that that road ends, it just drops off into nothing. So I've just made it to the end of what was the marina. That's a good 200 yards from where the water was in the 70s and 80s, way back there. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you where the water was in 2015. It's gonna be a little walk. It's all right, I'm used to walking at Salton Sea. Google it. As you probably know, if you don't know, I'm about to tell you. Because as Salton Sea dries up, where I'm standing now, like I said, just a few years ago, this was underwater. It exposes this dirt. That's dirt. And most of it's a very fine sand. And when the wind blows, it picks up the finest particles of it. And those particles are soaked in runoff that has been coming from the farms for the last 90 years. It goes into the water, it doesn't really affect the water. That's why it's safe to swim, even still today. But it's particulate and it sinks to the bottom, it grows in the mud. Now. This is all that mud. When the wind blows, it blows up that extremely fine, uh, fine particulate, blows it into Palm Springs, as far as Los Angeles, as far south as Mexico, Arizona, and that dust, when you breathe it in, it's poison. It gives you cancer. This is why when people say, it's gonna be a disaster when Salton Sea dries up, that's why. Not because it's sad that all the businesses went out of business and you can't ski there anymore. It's because this, what was mud, exposed lake bed, turns to dust, blows into Palm Springs, reduces the property values. That's the disaster. And it kills people too. Where I'm standing now is where in 2015, the water level was. When we were further up north, Corvina Beach, North Shore, uh, the Yacht Club, the water level was down, you know, measured in 100 yards. Because we're in the south end, the water's shallower here. This is the shallower end. When the water goes down, it, you see it much more here because it's more shallow. That way, if you can see my Jeep way back there, it's where it was in the 70s. So now, as I turn around toward the water, I can't even see the water. It's like a freaking mile. If you didn't think Salton Sea was drying up, I've, I've actually seen comments on some of my Salton Sea videos saying, oh, it looks fine to me. You're either blind or stupid. I'm still, my brain is kind of trying to wrap around how far down the water's going. Now they're doing a reclamation project here, the Red Hill Reclamation Project. They're gonna turn all this into wetlands. I thought for a minute that might be why the water level was so down, maybe they blocked it off, but they can't because this, was, this wasn't a inlet or anything like that. This is just the open end of Salton Sea. We're at the Navy base now. Technically, Naval Station. I gotta point that out because it upsets a lot of people if I say it wrong. This is one of my favorite places. I've been here a dozen times or more, and because I've been here so many times, I know exactly what the water levels are, where they were. There's lots of landmarks so you can see where the water is and <clears throat> compared to where it was from the last time I was here. From the 1940s until the 1980s, this was all underwater. This was a pier. 2014 and 15, the last time I was here, the water level was right here. That's where the water was. If you jumped off this little ledge here, your feet were wet. 
now not only can I jump off that ledge, but I can walk out. And I can keep walking. I walk quite a ways if you look behind me where I'm walking toward the water. It's quite a ways up there. If you've ever been down here before, you probably recognize that big telephone pole or something that's always been at the end of the pier. Well, now I can walk all the way out to it, just a little bit past it, to where the water level is. Not as bad as it is receded on the other side. I'm about 100 yards from where the water level was back in 2014. These guys behind me, they're working for NASA. There is some instrumentation out two miles off ashore on what we call the target. They've been coming out here for years to collect data and check things on it, make sure it's still working, make sure the dickheads haven't got out there and messed it up. And they just indicated to me that when they put the instrumentation on the platform, it's, a, it's like a pier out there, two miles offshore. They put it in in 2006, and from whatever they measure from the top of the, inst uh, the, the deck to the water level was six feet. So the water level was up six feet uh, to, to where the base of the, uh, the deck was. Now it's 27 feet down to the water. So from 2005, six, whenever they said they put it in, the water level has dropped out there two miles out, 27 feet lower than what it used to be. That's a big drop. Let's talk about some of the myths about salt and sea in this area. Some of the myths are that they dropped atomic bombs here into Salton Sea, that they tested atomic bombs. They did test atomic weapons here as part of the Manhattan Project. They tested the shapes. They were really big and heavy, and they had to make sure that when they dropped them from however many miles up, that they wouldn't spin or get wobbly or whatever. They used a Salton Sea test base, codenamed Sandy Beach, top secret at the time, to drop the shapes of the bombs, and then they would uh, watch them and measure and see how what see what they did. The California parachute, which is the tail fins you see on a lot of big bombs today, was developed here because of the testing that they did here. So it is true that they did atomic bomb related testing here back in the 1940s. There's another rumor that there is that they dropped a live atomic bomb into the Salton Sea. That's true, sort of. In the 1960s, could be wrong, something like that, late 50s early 60s, the Air Force accidentally dropped a nuclear weapon with fissionable material in it, and they never found it. It wasn't fused, as we all know, to go kablooey. You have to have the fuse. It takes a plutonium center, and without that, it nothing can happen. So that wasn't in it. So there's no danger of it ever exploding, but there is the danger of that uranium, enriched uranium, whatever was in it. It's not good. It's out there somewhere, and they never recovered it. We're in Salton City now. I would have been here sooner, but I had to save the lives of a couple of kids that got themselves stuck in the sand at the Navy base. So we're in Salton City at Johnson's Landing. Johnson's Landing was a popular place not too long ago. And we're at the marina at Johnson's Landing. So if you ever put out your boat or anything in Salton City, you're probably familiar with this area. So that's the marina there. The, the boat launch is way at the end of there, and you can see it heads down towards the water, which is way down past my Jeep, and there's a couple of Jeeps down there. I'm about 100 yards past the end of the boat launch marina, which is back there. And in 2014, this is about where the water was. And today, the water's about another 100 yards further out. Not as bad as it was over at Red Hill, which is on the most shallow end of the lake. So I'm now right at the at the mud line, as I like to call it, where if I go any further, I start to sink. And, oh, sh yeah, it's sinking. God damn it. I thought I knew this shore. Not as well as I thought I did. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs down means you like the smell of rotten fish. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you on the trail.